to start uh, slowly to build this app from scratch uh, in MIT App Inventor. Uh, I'm going to do this as slow as I can. Uh, if you can follow me, wonderful. Otherwise, you could pause the video and create uh, some things and then start the video again. So we go to my projects, start new project. I'm going to call my uh, app and hunger now. You could call it anything else you want. Uh, and where you see, uh, you know, the palette of the MIT App Inventor, where all the components are uh, displayed, the designer uh, view, uh, the components hierarchy, and the properties of the components. Okay, so let's start building this thing slowly. Uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to get my logo that I created in Photoshop displayed as my logo. So I'm going to uh, go to, so I dropped an image component uh, and I actually want everything to be nicely centered. So I go to the screen component and where it says align horizontal, I make that center, align vertical, I make that center. And then for the image, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select an image that I have created in Photoshop. So let's see if I can find that. Uh, so I have here uh, help stop hunger uh, banner that I've created, and this is going to be my logo. Okay. Now, as it is, it's going to be possibly quite huge. Uh, so what we need to do is we need to adjust that. So I'm going to just choose, I'm going to experiment. I don't quite know what I want. I'm going to try 200 pixels for width and then 200 pixels for height. And uh, this looks reasonable to me. I, I, I can make this smaller uh, in a minute if I need to. All right. So this is our logo. Uh, I would like my background color to be uh, gray. So what I do is I click on the screen properties and then where it says um, what is the background color. So let's find that. Uh, I'm going to choose it uh, to be dark gray. I like that as a background. All right. Now what I do is I bring down a button. Uh, the button properties you can change here. Uh, I like my button shapes to be rounded, so I'm just going to select that option. I would like my button, um, uh, a, the, the text to be uh, request um, excess food pick up. Okay, so it's basically reminding us what this does. And then I would like my button color to be green, sort of like the green light. Uh, it's basically the, the signal to go. So that looks uh, pretty good. Uh, now I wanna, what I would like to do is I would like to have a little horizontal um, arrangement, horizontal layout, in which I'm going to create the administrative uh, interface. So what the administrative interface looks like is there is a uh, button, the submit button for the administrator, and I might as well change that right now. I'm going to call this admin so that it's only for admin use. Uh, I'm going to again, again make it rounded, uh, and I'm going to make this, let's color this one. Uh, let's color this, uh, how about orange? Okay, and then uh, again, in the user interface, you're going to notice uh, there is something called password text box. So this is where you could drop uh, a component called the password text box. So you have the administrative button and then the, uh, the password text box that goes with it. Okay, now a couple of things I'm going to change. The password text box, when you click on that, uh, it should ask you what is the hint like what should say what should be written here I'm gonna just say uh, enter admin password so this way when uh, the user opens the app there will be an indication there's, there'll be an instruction what to do there okay uh, and then the text we leave empty uh, and that should be fine 
okay so this is what the first screen is going to look like Alrighty, uh, we have created our first screen. Uh, now, if you remember the rough draft that we had uh, created, uh, when the user, uh, the client presses the green request pickup button, they will come to a screen where uh, the where they can write the information about the pickup. Okay, so that means we need to create a second screen. You do that by coming here. Uh, press the add screen button uh, by default it's called screen 2 I'm going to leave it as default but if you want to call it something like the client screen or the pickup screen something like that you could uh, do that uh, screen 1 is the only screen you cannot uh, give a name yourself it is by default called screen 1 uh, for our purposes we don't need to change these screen names so I'm going to create now a second screen and let's see if it happened Yep, we are now in the second screen. Alrighty, now let's start designing this uh, second screen. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna have is some kind of an instruction. So I'm gonna have the, a, a label here. Uh, and again, let's uh, change the screen properties, screen two properties. I would like my uh, uh, line horizontal to be centered. So I'm gonna would make it like that. Uh, I'm also going to uh, make my screen color, uh, again, dark gray, uh, which means probably I'm going to have to change my uh, label uh, text uh, colors in a minute, but we'll fix that in a second. So I select my now my label, uh, and then for the label, I would like to either give an instruction or say something like thank you. So I'm going to say thank you for combating uh, hunger combating uh, hunger okay so that's the text uh, as you can see it is not very visible uh, because of the background color so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the font um, and I'm going to change the text color from black to white so it is uh, better visible. Uh, you might want to make things, for example, bold. You might want to change the font size to, let's try 20 if it's too big or not. Uh, something like that. I'll just try 18. I feel something in between. So thank you for combating hunger. Okay, so this is where we thank our clients. Now we're going to need uh, another label, which indicates that this is where the uh, user is going to uh, be writing the address. So I write here, address of pickup. Uh, again, I'm going to color this uh, white so we can see it. Uh, and underneath this label, I'm going to enter, I'm going to drag a text box component because this is where the user is going to enter the address of the pickup. Uh, the, the size of this text box is too small for, a, for an address. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the width to fill the parent. This will extend to the size of the screen. Okay. Uh, and you have other options there. You could make it multi-line if you feel the address needs uh, a lot of uh, lines to be described. Uh, I'm just going to leave it as is. Uh, and I'm going to do a similar thing for phone number. So I'm going to uh, do the same thing. I'm going to say uh, phone number for the pickup. I'm going to color uh, it white again. And I'm going to enter here a text box where the phone number can be uh, written. Uh, phone numbers don't tend to be that long. So I think this width is uh, about right. And then lastly, uh, we would like to have uh, a comments area where the uh, client can write what they would like to tell us about the pickup, what food there is, what time is the pickup, etc. So I'm going to call this comments for pickup. Uh, and again, color, I'm going to change it to uh, white. And now 
when I drag another text box, uh, I want to make sure that this is not only as large as possible. So I'm going to fill the parent, uh, but I'm going to select the multi line option. There might be multiple lines of text uh, that the uh, client wants to enter. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give a um, pixel height here. I mean, it's sort of uh, eyeballing it. I don't know what's going to work, but I want it to be, let's say, about this uh, high. Okay. So this is where the information is going to be written. Now we need a button where uh, once the user is finished, uh, they're going to be able to schedule the uh, uh, food pickup. So I'm going to call this request food pickup. Uh, I'm going to do my usual things. I'm going to get a round uh, button shape. Uh, I would like the button color to be green, symbolic for to go. Uh, and let me just check that everything looks good. Uh, yeah, so this I think could be our screen too, where the client gives the food pickup information. We now have our two screens, screen uh, one where you have your logo and the uh, initial buttons, and then you have screen two where uh, the client writes their uh, information for food pickup. Now, uh, when the uh, administrator user of this app enters their password, they need to go to a separate screen where they can have access to administrative information, namely, the food uh, requests, the list of food requests. So for that, we're going to again add a screen. Uh, screen three as a name is good enough for me. So I'm going to say OK. Uh, and then uh, if we wait a second, we'll see a third screen. And in this screen, uh, it's going to be a simple screen. We're going to have uh, only a few things. Uh, first, we're going to have a list view. I will explain later what list view is. It basically uh, is a nice uh, uh, interface where you could display, uh, in this case, the food requests, food pickup requests. So I uh, dra drop, dragged and dropped it. Uh, I'm going to make uh, its height to be, uh, let's actually fill the parent for both of them fill the parent for uh, both uh, width and height. Uh, I don't mind taking this much space because the only other thing I'm going to need, which I'm going to drag and drop right now, is a button. Uh, and let's actually change the screen three property so that everything is aligned horizontally at the center. Um, I should also quickly, uh, in screen three, color uh, the background to be dark gray. That's the color that I've been using all over. Uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, click on this button. I'm going to call this button delete uh, data uh, base. Okay. And this will basically delete the information stored in the cloud. Uh, I want again the shape to be rounded. Uh, I'm going to give it a color of uh, red just to warn that it is a sort of an irreversible process. People should use this with care. It will uh, delete all the information that is in the database. Okay. Alrighty. Now we have uh, our three screens. Screen one, which is the sort of the welcoming screen. Screen two for the client. Screen three for the administrator. Uh, but what is uh, what you're going to notice is uh, none of these uh, screens are at this point functional. So if I try to press any of these buttons, uh, nothing will happen because I haven't uh, given it behavior yet. Our blocks uh, uh, region, as, as you click on that, uh, you're going to notice there's no code. So there's no behavior, and we are about to do that uh, in a minute. Thank you. 
Now it is time to give behavior to our components. When you press this button currently, nothing will happen because there is absolutely no code, uh, no place where um, the behavior is defined. So that's what we're going to do right now. Uh, before we do that, uh, I just want to tell you about a good habit in MIT App Inventor. So if you look at this components hierarchy here, you're going to notice that all of the components uh, here are given default names, button one, button two, etc. When you arrive at the blocks uh, uh, region and you're about to write some code, uh, because button one and button two is not descriptive, you're going to get confused which one does what. So it is a great habit, uh, have this habit early on, to actually rename your components so that they're meaningful and they carry information. So uh, I'm just going to start with uh, our image here. I'm going to name this, uh, for example, the logo image. So whatever it is, I'm going to describe it in the first part. It's a logo. And then the second part has to be the name of the component so that you remember uh, its properties and uh, capabilities in a minute. So I call this the logo image. The, the first button here. I'm going to rename this uh, request pick up again. I end with the component name button request pick up button. Okay. Uh, horizontal arrangement doesn't need to have a special name. However, button two here it's an administrative button, so I'm going to call this admin again component name button. And then the password uh, text box is pretty clear what the password text box is, so we don't need to rename that. Okay. Now let's go to the blocks uh, editor here, and you're going to notice our uh, name changes have been indicated here, and this, this is going to be very helpful to us in a minute. Now let's think about this logically. What should happen? When I am in this screen and I press the uh, the request button, the green button. Let's decide what should happen. When I press the, so I go to um, the request pickup button and the first event handler there uh, is when request but, uh, pickup button is clicked, uh, it tells us, it basically gives us a chance to describe what needs to happen. Well, all that needs to happen is you have to open another screen called screen two. So for that, you go to control. Uh, these are the prefabricated uh, blocks for you. Uh, if you go to control, one of the options there is open another screen with screen name. And what we need to do is we go to the text uh, blocks. The first one is an empty string where we can write the exact name of the screen. It is called screen two. If you wrote this, uh, uh, with spaces or with, uh, you forget the capitalization, etc. it will not work. It has to be the exact same name as the uh, name of the screen. So when you press the request pickup button, all that should happen is, um, is it goes, it brings you to another screen called screen two. All right. Now, a similar thing is true for the administrative button. So when you click the administrative button, uh, there's a little bit of trick here because um, only if the password entered is correct, you should go to screen three. So for that, we need what is called a conditional. It's called an if-then block, all right? So uh, what should happen if the, so I'm going to put an equal sign, uh, if the password text box uh, text. So if the te password text box text, meaning whatever was entered by the admin into the uh, password text box, if it is equal to a particular password, and here you could be creative, um, you could call it whatever you want. I'm going to call it password is one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So if the password text box text is equal to one, two, three, four, five, then it should open another screen. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this, which I already created, and I'm going to copy and paste it. 
Uh, I did uh, control C, control V. Uh, and all I have to do is now change the name of the screen from screen two to screen three. Okay. So here we have a conditional uh, opening of screen three. Uh, you might wonder why isn't there an else uh, option here? Because uh, there's also an if then else conditional. Uh, if the password entered is wrong, I don't want to do anything. I just want basically uh, to wait until the correct password is entered and the button is clicked. All right. So uh, it might be a good idea to test uh, these. So let's bring about our uh, emulator to see if it is still functional. Uh, I might need to uh, refresh the companion screen. So I'm going to go to that. Let's test this. If I press the um, request button, it brings me correctly to the uh, second screen. Now let's go back to the first screen again. Um, and let's see what happens. Let me enter a wrong password. Okay. So I'm going to enter one, two, three as a password. Uh, when you, I hit admin, nothing happens. Okay. But imagine that now I enter one, two, three, four, five, which was my password. When I click the admin button, it brings me to screen three where there is the list view and the database. Okay. So believe it or not, the uh, screen one's coding is only this much. There's not much else that you need to do. Now it is time to code uh, screen two's behavior. Uh, so remember, this is where the client, uh, the eateries, will enter their information, address, phone number, comments, etc. Now there are several uh, components that we already created here, which uh, we're going to rename them to for clarity in a minute. Uh, but the, there are two components that I uh, did not include yet, so I'm going to do that right now. Uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to drop a clock as a component. Uh, so let's go and find sensors. Clock is a uh, sensor component. Uh, I'm going to select clock, drop and drag. And you're going to notice it adds up on the hierarchy, but it doesn't show up anywhere on the interface because it is what is called a non-visible component. Now, you might wonder why I need a clock. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, capture the uh, information, the time information when this, uh, uh, when the client fills uh, all of this uh, questionnaire here, so that we'll have a sense when was the pickup order, um, when was the pickup request placed. Okay, uh, you could ask this information to the user, but that's needless. Uh, uh, waste of their time because um, the mobile app will already uh, have a way of keeping track of time itself. So I have the clock. Now, even more importantly, I need another uh, component called CloudDB. This component, again, a non-visible component, is going to allow this information that is entered uh, to be sent to the cloud uh, by when the client presses the uh, the green button here, okay? We'll talk about the details about how CloudDB works in a second, but all you need to know is it is basically where uh, in a non-local fashion, so it's not going to be stored on the uh, user's mobile app itself, but it's going to be sent somewhere in the what we call the cloud. Uh, and once all the information is in the cloud, the administrator can uh, pick that information and act accordingly. Okay, so I think we have all the information. Now, again, good habit is uh, we should label things properly. So the first label, uh, I'm going to call this uh, thank you label. Uh, remember, I give it a descriptive name and then end with the component name, thank you label. The second one, I'm going to call it uh, the address uh, address uh, label. That's what it is. Okay. Uh, the first text box, I'm going to call it address text box. 
Uh, the third label is the phone number uh, label. So I'm going to call that phone number label. Uh, the second text box is the uh, phone uh, number text box. So I'm going to enter that. Okay. Um, and then the fourth label is uh, where you have the comments. So this is called the comments label. And then I'm going to call this comments text box. Comments text box. Uh, and then the button is important. We're going to call this um, the uh, request request uh, uh, food pickup. Again, I end with the button uh, with the component name button. Request food pickup button. So when it's coding time, I'm not puzzled what each of these components are really doing. Okay. So we have properly named our uh, components. Uh, now what we could do is we can go to the blocks, and now we're going to describe what happens. Now the user is going to enter their information at their leisure. We have no control over that. The only thing that we have to keep track of is when the green button is picked, what should happen. That's the only thing that we need to keep track of. So that's what we're going to do. So we find where the uh, button is. I click on the component, and these are all the uh, blocks associated with that particular component. So here's an event handler which says when the request food pickup button is clicked, blah, 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 this is what should happen. Now let's think about what should happen. The information stored should be sent to the cloud. So first of all, let us create a list where we store all the information uh, that the user has typed. So I'm going to make a list. Uh, if you look at here, there is one, two, three informations here. Uh, uh, and in addition to these three uh, informations here, there's also the clock information. So I'm going to create a list with four sockets, meaning four entries. Okay, uh, the first one is, uh, we'll, I'll leave that uh, empty for a second because it's a little bit harder to explain, but uh, let's get the, uh, from the address text box, let's get the address text box text. So that's the first information we're going to be sending to the cloud. Uh, the second one is the phone number text box. Uh, so... From there, we're going to get that text. And the last one is from the comments text box. We're going to get the text from the comments text box. And we're going to add that as the fourth item of, the, uh, of this list. Now, uh, for clocks, clocks are a little bit uh, potentially confusing. Not really, but I'm just going to try to walk this through with you. What we'd like to have is the information, uh, how to store the time. So uh, I'm going to select the format that shows like this. It shows us the, uh, the month, the date, and the uh, year, so that we have some uh, sense of what, on what day was this uh, uh, request made. You could be more specific and enter hours, minutes, seconds, etc. I don't need to be that precise. I'm going to grab this uh, format. But then we need to grab the instance of time. And that you find at the bottom. Uh, it's not obvious at all. It's called clocks uh, now. The instance is called now. So when the uh, button is pressed, at that instant, I want to get the time in this format. So this is how I'm going to store. Uh, things in my list. First the time, then the address, then the phone number, then the comments. Okay. Now, where is this going to go? Well, this is going to go into the cloud. And in the cloud uh, blocks, you're going to notice one of the options is append value to list. 
So you can imagine many, many eateries are sending their requests uh, and we just want to have this particular request to be added to the list. Now, uh, in CloudDB, you store things by their tags. Uh, these are kind of like the variable names, if you will. Um, I'm just going to have a very simple tag name. I go to the text uh, blocks. Uh, I'm just going to call this uh, food data. Okay, you could call it anything you want, but I would like uh, the uh, the information that the client enters to be sent to the cloud uh, with a tag called food data, and whatever other clients are sending is going to be added to that ongoing list of requests. Uh, it is customary when you're done uh, with an information, it's customary to clean up uh, the entries of the text box, uh, text boxes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to um, go to the address, address text box options here. Uh, and one of the options is set address uh, text box to. Uh, I'm going to put there an empty string, which tells us basically that it was cleaned. So when the user enters their information and presses the button, that text box should be cleaned. Uh, and you're going to notice that there are other options here. So what I could do is I can copy paste twice. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to change now this to phone number text box and the comments text box. So all of these will be cleared. And what should probably happen once uh, this information is sent to the cloud and the entries are cleared, you should return to uh, screen one. So we use something that we have done uh, before. Uh, so we're going to say, open another screen called screen one. So when the data has been entered and sent to the cloud, we're basically saying, go back to the welcoming screen in case they want to, the user wants to enter more information. Okay. Alrighty. Wow. This was hard. This is probably the hardest part of the project so far. Uh, the rest I feel is going to be easier, but I hope this makes sense to you. We collected the information that the user entered. We grabbed the time from the uh, mobile phone. We made a list out of these informations and stored them under a tag called food data and send it to the cloud. Okay. Alrighty, that concludes the coding for screen number two. Alrighty, now we're going to code uh, the behavior for screen three. Uh, remember, when the administrator enters their password correctly and presses the admin button, screen one leads to screen three. And what screen three is, it basically has a list view, which we're going to discuss in a second and a, a delete database button, all right? So uh, let us first of all uh, rename our components uh, so that it makes some sense. Uh, list view, you could probably leave it as it is. We will not get confused by that. But button one, let's rename it to say delete, uh, I'm gonna call it DB for database, delete DB button so that I will remember that it is a delete database uh, button, okay? So I've renamed my uh, components. Now, let's uh, think what should happen. So when the screen three initializes, meaning screen one sends us to screen three, what should happen is uh, there should be a request made to the cloud DB to send all the existing information there, okay? Now, one thing you're going to notice is uh, in this uh, in this uh, screen tree, we do not yet have access to CloudDB, okay? So what we should do immediately before we forget uh, is we go again to the storage uh, components here, grab and drop and drag a CloudDB component. Now, uh, this cloud DB, even though it is in different screens, it is the exact same cloud DB 
uh, access that we have in, uh, in, in screen two. In screen two, let me show you what it looks like. You have a cloud DB component and you might wonder, well, how do we know cloud DB in screen two is the same as cloud DB in screen three? Uh, this is one of the properties of MIT App Inventor that uh, the cloud DB component is shared between uh, the screens. It is referring to the same storage space. Uh, this is where, by the way, the token, if you are into more technicality, this is where the token is specified. So it's not sending you to another uh, part of the cloud. It's going to the same exact location. Okay. Alrighty. Now let's start the coding for screen three. Uh, so when the screen is, screen three is initialized. Okay. So when screen three is initialized. What we would like to do is we'd like to send a request to cloud DB. Uh, it's a get value request. We're going to say cloud DB, please get me the information, get me the value that is stored under the tag food data. You might remember this was the name we gave earlier to our tag. Now it's always going to ask you, what should I do if there's no value there? Well, uh, normally lists are going to be stored in the under the tag food data. So if there's nothing there, uh, all I should return is an empty list. Okay. So here I'm making a request to get all the existing data from the cloud. Now this event is going to send a request to the cloud. And the cloud is going to look for this tag. And what's going to happen is it's going to return with a get, got value event. So it's going to tell you, uh, oh, I got the value that you were asking for. So when the got value event happens, the question is what should happen? What should happen is we should set the uh, list view elements. So we find the elements options are set list view um, elements to the value that was returned from the cloud okay and remember this is going to be a list of lists it's going to be a list of all the requests individual client uh, eateries have entered right so this is what should happen you should set the elements of the list view so all these uh, parts of the list view are going to be filled with data coming from the cloud. All right. Now, sometimes the following situation is going to happen. The, at, the admin is already, uh, you know, in the admin uh, window, in the admin screen. They're examining the existing uh, uh, requests for food pickup. What's going to happen is at that instant, another client out there somewhere is going to request their own food pickup. Uh, uh, and what should happen is, as they send this information to the cloud, the cloud needs to let the admin know, oh, you have to now update your screen because new data arrived, okay? Uh, so CloudDB is very clever for that. There is something called, uh, called data change event handler. So when the data in the cloud has changed, what should happen is basically identical to this uh, that we have done before. I'm going to copy and paste here. What should happen is uh, the new value, uh, just technically I'm going to get rid of this one, but it's the same thing. Uh, I'm going to basically now get the new value and set it to the list view elements. So this will basically refresh the uh, page and uh, the new information is going to be displaced. Okay? Displayed. Uh, lastly, we need to figure out what to do with the delete uh, database button. When that button is clicked, what should happen is we should send a request to the cloud DB to clear the, uh, basically clear all the values under the tag uh, for data. So we're going to request uh, when the admin request the uh, data to be cleared uh, we're going to go to the cloud found the tag uh, 
full data and we're going to clear all the information under that tab okay now it's also a good idea to do the following i'm going to get rid of this thing here uh, now the list view elements need to be sent uh, need to be assigned an empty list so that the list view itself will clear it will basically show us uh, empty uh, empty data. There should not be anything after the, uh, the clear database button has been pressed. All righty, believe it or not, uh, we are uh, basically done. Uh, we have now created uh, all the code that gives behavior uh, to uh, our screens. Alrighty, uh, now it is time to test our uh, app. You have created an app with a, a graphical user interface, multiple screens. Uh, there is code for each of these screens behavior. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, test. Uh, you can do the testing by going to connect uh, and selecting either the AI companion or the emulator. Uh, it is actually also recommended because you really want to be able to test this with multiple mobile apps representing multiple clients, each of them entering their own data. Individually, they are sending their data to the cloud and then a separate uh, mobile app uh, where the admin is checking the results. Uh, you really need to actually uh, do what is called a build. You make a build by uh, selecting the uh, first option here, for example, or the second option, uh, but this will create a QR code, which you could then scan with your App Inventor uh, AI companion, and uh, that way multiple uh, mobile phones or...